Do you know that it is not everybody who gets to know about your blessings that can contain them? Are you aware that your good news is bad in some quarters? Have you observed how some people feel insecure when they hear about your blessings? Do you pay attention to how people casually respond to your mind-blowing testimonies? Do you know that not everybody deserves to know about your blessings? Have you seen that it is not everybody that you tell about your blessings that take it gladly? As you progress in this video, you will learn to be careful about who you tell your blessings to. Stay glued to your screen. Blessings are desirable to everyone, but not everyone is pleased with your blessings. So, you have to be careful who you tell about your blessings so that you will not expose yourself to hatred and enmity that can be avoided. Some of the battles you are currently facing, whether physically or spiritually, could result from you telling your blessings to people who are not meant to be informed. It might sound ridiculous, but it is a hard fact you must accept. Have you not heard cases of bosses who do everything to keep their subordinates below them because they believe that the promotion of such subordinates is a threat to them? You will have to reconcile with the fact that people naturally have selfish tendencies, and as a result, they always want the best for themselves alone. People have no issue with you as long as you are not above them. People may not mind that you are getting blessed if your blessings do not outshine theirs. But the moment they realize that you are making headway in life and they do not measure up to your level of success, your blessings start to get on their nerves. They might smile at you and praise you to your face, but deep down, they wish you evil. In the worst cases, they wish you death. This is to let you know that not everyone deserves to know of that promotion. Not everybody should hear of that contract you just won. Not everybody should be privy to that mouth-watering offer you just got. Yes, you should love people irrespective of how they act or behave. Yet, it is wisdom for you to know that you do not owe everybody an update about your life, your blessings included. You should know where to draw the line, even with family members sometimes. Family members are expected to love themselves genuinely and share each other's happiness. But history has proven that sometimes even family members might hate you for your blessing. Genesis chapter 40 verses 5 and 8 reads, Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. His brothers said to him, Do you intend to reign over us? Will you rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. The experience of Joseph with his brothers is something you have to learn from. At this point in Joseph's life, there was nothing special to call a blessing to save for his dream. But this dream threatened them because they felt they could perceive what magnitude of blessing awaited Joseph in the future. But this would not have made them mad at him. The madness came from the realization that no matter how big they also became in life, their blessedness will still prostrate before Joseph's blessedness. And so they hated Joseph. They hated him so much that they plotted his death, not minding that he was their father's son. If this can happen between blood brothers, how much more between friends, colleagues, neighbors, business partners, or even church brethren? This is not to say that you must get suspicious of everybody in your life or around you. This is only to let you know that on the question of who you should be careful about sharing your blessings with, there is no closed case. As much as there are insincere people everywhere, there are also people who are sincerely committed to your blessing and increase. Some people mean well to you and will go to all lengths to sacrifice their comfort just to help you become better. How then can you know who is who? For one, you should not give people privileges they are not entitled to. Learn to respect and abide by boundaries. Learn to put people in their place and not indulge them unnecessarily. Let your relationship with your boss at work remain within the confines of work. There's no point in bringing your family plans or goals to work. No matter how excited you are about something happening in your life or your home, learn to keep it there. There's no point in bringing it up as a subject of discussion at work. Many people's pitfall is due to their indifference to these things. You should avoid such pitfalls. You do not want to fall victim to envious neighbors, so keep your mouth shut about your blessings. The fact that you attend the same church with that brother does not mean you can let him in on your life and the blessings in it. It might shock you that his church going does not stop him from gossiping. You do not want to hear your matter in the council of elders in the next church gathering. 
This is not to say that you cannot share your blessings with a colleague at work, a brother in Christ, or a neighbor on your street. But you must know them so well and be sure of their person. You must have related with them closely and proved that they are all about good. As mentioned earlier, Joseph was not sensitive enough to discern his brother's countenance when he shared his first dream with them. If Joseph had studied and paid close attention to their response, he would have realized that they were not happy for him. But because his excitement blinded him, he could not see beyond his nose. The second time he shared his dream with them, they sold him into slavery. This honest mistake caused him so much pain and suffering that could have been avoided. You should not allow your excitement to blind your sight. Be careful enough to pay attention to how your friends, colleagues, or family responded to the news of your blessings in the past to gain wisdom for the future. The fact that you are honestly mistaken about their sincerity and intentions will not absolve you of the consequences of indulging them. Joseph suffered for his ignorance, but you can save yourself from that ignorance now. When you are sensitive and attentive enough, you will know the people who are real towards you and mature enough to celebrate your blessings with you. This category of people is committed to increasing your blessings and not reducing them. They will protect you and what you have from harm and destruction because they know it is sacred. These are the kind of people you can share your blessings with. And sometimes you cannot discern them by physical sight. It takes the Holy Spirit to reveal to you the thoughts and the intents of the heart of men. With the help of the Holy Spirit, you have the advantage of being able to discern people. In John chapter 14, verse 26, Jesus speaks of the Holy Spirit, saying, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. When you are a child of God, the Holy Spirit is in you, and you should engage Him to your advantage. One of the things He can do for you is to help you discern people. You do not have to live by your senses alone, because they might fail you. People can pretend so well that you will fall for their pretense, but when you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you, you will be saved from the deceit of men. When you rely on the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to know who and who to tell about your blessings. It will be so good for you to tell your blessings to people interested in your growth and progress. People who know where you are coming from, who know your struggles, who know your nightmares, who prayed for you and trusted God with you, they will devote themselves to protecting your blessing from the snares of evil men. Mary, the mother of Jesus, had such company in Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. Luke chapter 1, verses 39 and 56 says, At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. In the preceding verses to this one, an angel had appeared to Mary to tell her that she would carry the pregnancy of the Savior of the world. This was too much for Mary to contain all by herself. She needed someone who would understand. She probably needed someone who would protect her from gainsayers and neighbors. And Elizabeth was her point of call. When you read through Luke 1, you see Elizabeth's reception to Mary's visit. Even though Elizabeth knew that her son would be a forerunner to Mary's son, she was not threatened. Neither was she unhappy for Mary. Rather, she gave Mary an open arm of love. This should let you know that you cannot tell your blessings to everybody. You should tell your blessings to only those who can protect them and not destroy them. Sometimes, the best thing you can do for yourself is to learn the discipline of keeping your mouth shut. Joseph did not have this discipline, and it landed him into slavery. Mary had this discipline, and she was preserved. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 2 says, You have been trapped by what you said and snared by the words of your mouth. Whether your blessings are small or big, tangible or intangible, you must know that wisdom is needed to preserve them. You must let your heart teach your mouth wisdom. You must let your heart add learning to your lips. Do not get carried away with the gist that you spill which should be kept within. Neither should you ever feel pressured to impress anyone with who you are or what you have. And if you start to boast of your blessings, it might land you in the pit. If you must tell anyone about your blessings, let them be to the right people as God leads you through the Holy Spirit. God is willing to bless you. However, there are situations, attitudes, or actions that can obstruct these blessings from manifesting. Could this be why you have yet to receive your long-term answers? You can pray for a whole month, but these things will keep hindering your answers. 
you'll never hit a breakthrough as long as they are still there. So to enjoy God's blessings, you need to pay attention to God's word today to get rid of these things. They're unhealthy to your prosperity, and they do not align with God's will for your life. The first among them is disobedience to God. We usually don't pay attention to this. We think that it's a trait only features among kids, but that's not true. You can also disobey God as an adult. If you disobey any of his commandments, he won't bless you. It doesn't matter if you disobey on a large or small scale, God hates disobedience. And instead of blessing the disobedient ones, he curses them. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 1 and 2 and 15 says, If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commandments I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above the nations on earth. All these things will come to you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. However, if you do not obey the Lord your God and do not carefully follow all his commandments and decrees I am giving you today, all these curses will come on you and overtake you. This passage states that blessings are for the obedient while curses are for the disobedient ones. So are you disobeying God in paying your tithe and offering? Are you disobeying by refusing to fellowship with brethren? Remember, disobedience is any action against God's word and ordinance. Obey God's word. He will bless you abundantly. Living in sin can also block your blessings. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13, that those who cover their sins shall not prosper. However, if they confess and renounce them, God will grant them mercy. When you refuse to confess your sins but take delight in them, you are indirectly telling God that he has no control over your life. You wish to walk alone. But for how long can you do that? Can you even survive alone for a day without his breath in you? You need God at every stage of your life. Stop giving the devil a chance to keep swallowing your prosperity. If you choose to continue in sin, God cannot bless you. His blessings are only laid up for the righteous. The astonishing thing is that a man can continue to sin but prosper. Listen, even this prosperity is a curse. The Bible has said that the righteous will enjoy the prosperity of the wicked. So, a prosperous sinner is only working for the righteous. He can't enjoy it. Check your life today. Is there any hidden sin in your cupboard? I implore you to confess and forsake them today. When you do this, God will open His blessings upon your life. Another thing that can block your blessing is unforgiveness. Refusing to forgive a person affects your life. It's like a parasite on a tree. The tree keeps growing while the parasite sucks its juice and strength. You are reducing your enlargement when you refuse to forgive people. Moreover, Mark chapter 11 verse 25 says, And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Can you count the number of times you've prayed this year? Each time you kneel to pray, the grudges and hurts in your heart stand before God. They block Him from granting your request. He can't forgive your sins nor bless your life. You need to let go of whoever has offended you. Fix your mind on that person now and just forgive him or her. Don't look at the gravity of what they've done. Think about the things that you would enjoy from this moment on. Joy and peace will follow in your heart. And you'll lack nothing because God will provide all that you need. And here is another thing that can block your blessing. Unbelief. Lack of faith stops your blessing because it's another way of saying God is impotent. Can you imagine a child telling his father he needs some candies but knows his dad can't provide them? That's the highest level of disrespect or humiliation. That's what you do when you don't believe in God. God is all in all. However, you will struggle to get a drop of water from him if you choose to belittle him. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, And without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So praying isn't enough. You can pray and receive nothing, even a no from God. Learn to trust him. Give the totality of your life to him. Don't doubt him when he speaks. That's how you can receive your blessings. Pride can also stop you from receiving your blessings. The scriptures say that pride goes before a fall. What that means is that a proud man can never stand. He can't receive anything from God. God can't lift such a soul. If you are such an individual, you must humble yourself so God can bless you. 
Some used to be humble until God gave them a taste of his riches. This made them lift their hearts and assume that no one could be above them. They don't regard God's presence anymore, nor do they respect their neighbors. God isn't happy with this. That's why he didn't think twice before blocking their blessings. Humble yourself. Whenever you go to God, do it in reverence. Remember the story of Nebuchadnezzar? He said aloud that he had built Babylon with his hands. God saw his pride and turned him into a beast. He lost his riches, glamour, and honor. Another man took over the ruling of the kingdom that he claimed to have built with his hands. He remained a beast until he realized that God rules in the affairs of men. You must always remember this as well. God rules in the affairs of men. You are a man. He rules you. So don't block your blessings with pride. Be humble and he will promote you. Aside from pride, laziness can stop you from receiving your blessings. How will God bless an idle man? You can't sit in a position doing nothing and expect God to rain his blessings upon you. How? God's not a magician. You will never wake up to see money all around you. It'll never happen. You need to work. What God promises is that he will bless the works of your hands. But if you do not have any work, he'll bless nothing. When you read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, God blessed hardworking men. David was working in the pastures when God made him a king. Abraham wasn't dancing when God called him. He was a skilled shepherd. Jacob wasn't a servant to Laban, but God still blessed him above his master. That means that regardless of your position, God will bless you as long as you're hardworking. You can watch this video to the end, but God won't bless you if you don't take action. God blesses active shoulders, not ones lying down. Do you want God's blessings? Apply for that job. Take that course. Develop your skills. Do something and watch if God won't bless you. If you choose to pursue your ambitions against God's call, you're hindering your prosperity. God has a plan for your life. Therefore, when He calls you for a special assignment, He'll make provision for you. You don't have to worry about how the blessings will come if you obey Him. But if you pursue your desires, you're on the wrong course. You will only try, but won't meet the target. You will live your life on opinions, suggestions, and luck. You might become successful, but this won't last. You won't have the rest until you obey God's will for your life. So obey God's call today. Stop looking for your gain. Surrender your life to God and watch Him announce you to the world. The words of your mouth can stop your prosperity. Are you the type that speaks vulgar words? Do you delight in speaking negatively or always complaining? All these actions can stop God from blessing you. Why? Your words show who you are. If you're the type that loves to speak negative words to yourself, it only means that your thoughts are also negative. Such a heart can't house God's treasures. How will he even hear your prayers? Proverbs chapter 18 verses 20 and 21 says, From the fruit of their mouth a person's stomach is filled. With the harvest of their lips they are satisfied. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. In a nutshell, your words dictate what you receive. It can lead to God blessing you or the other way. Learn to speak positive words to yourself and others. Proclaim God's goodness and favor on your way. Yes, your situation might be negative, but speak positively. You might be sick, but speak healing to your body and soul. Change your words and your life will change. Being ungrateful can also cease your blessings. When you thank God for what he has done, he'll be eager to do more. But when you see nothing in little, you're not ready for abundance. God loves to shower his blessings upon the grateful heart. The Bible tells the story of Jesus and the 10 lepers. They saw Jesus and cried out that he should heal them. Jesus told them to go and show themselves to the priests. While they were still on their way, the leprosy left them. They received their healing. These 10 lepers were very happy. However, only one remembered the source of the miracle. He turned and knelt before Jesus, giving thanks. Jesus then asked about the nine. His statement shows that he was expecting them to give thanks. That would have perfected their testimony. Jesus told the grateful man that he had been made whole. Being whole differs from healing. Others can still become leprous, but the grateful man is free from the disease forever. 
always give thanks to God. He is the only one that can answer your prayers. The more you give thanks, the more He perfects your life. And don't forget to commit every portion of your life to God. Don't try to find assistance in the hands of men. There's a possibility that they would fail you. God will never fail. Be hardworking, avoid sin or disobedience, be thankful to God for all things, and watch Him open the floodgates of heaven upon you. When God blesses you, keep your mouth shut. Have you ever wondered why, when you talk about the good things happening to you or the next step you are about to take to a certain set of people, everything crumbles? The things that were working before just stop working, and evil starts looming. Today, the Lord is about to reveal one of the greatest weapons to fight against this. The negative effects of talking to the wrong people must stop. So ensure you watch this video to the end. You need to know that we are in an evil world, and no matter how good you think you are, you have enemies fighting day and night against you. Don't ever forget that. Jesus was the most perfect man on earth, yet he had several enemies, and these enemies were not distant people, but people close to him. In Psalm 23, 5, the Bible says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. NIV. This scripture means that your enemies are not far from you. Your dining is an intense part of the house, and anyone that dines with you is close to you. No wonder the Bible also says a man's enemy is his household. Take a moment to reflect and remember how many things you have lost by talking to close enemies who smile at you but wish you harm inwardly. This revelation is enough to make you keep your mouth shut when God blesses you, or even when you are about to achieve something big. Remember the story of Joseph, who was so sure of his brothers. He considered his brothers as family and felt they meant well for him, but unknown to him, they meant the opposite. Though the evil they planned served as a route to the top, it elongated his journey and caused him pain he could have avoided if only he had been quiet. Hezekiah also did something similar. He was gravely ill and close to death. The prophet of God came to pronounce his death sentence. But after the decree, Hezekiah chose to pray to God about it. He was healed through his silent prayers. But unfortunately, he celebrated his recovery by engaging in actions he shouldn't have. When news of his healing spread far and wide, since he couldn't keep quiet about it, people from foreign countries who didn't believe in the true God came to visit with the disguised intention of celebrating with him. He welcomed them and showcased all the blessings God had bestowed upon him and the nation. In a matter of years, the same country, whose representatives he had shown around his possessions, came to Israel to seize everything. What made the conspiracy successful was the fact that the king had previously revealed his treasures to them. Sometimes the people with whom you share your blessings are plotting to take them away. Beloved, some secrets and blessings are only meant for you and not to be shared. Exposing them is like exposing yourself to a time bomb. It does not mean you shouldn't share testimonies, as your testimonies could be why someone might decide to keep pushing. But even in sharing your testimonies, be careful about whom you share them with and how much detail you give. Remember, if Joseph had only told his brothers he had a dream without fully narrating it, he might as well have saved his head. Many times we contribute to our own misfortune by eagerly sharing our testimonies, particularly those that we are still expecting or the ones we have not fully manifested yet. Even though Revelation 12:11 says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony, discernment is needed to know the appropriate time to give one's testimony. And just because someone claps the loudest for you does not mean the person is happy for you. Some individuals may appear to be your strongest supporters, yet secretly plot your downfall. Others may appear to celebrate your success loudly, but harbor deep feelings of envy. These people are often wolves in sheep's clothing, which is why you need wisdom and discernment to recognize that not everyone is truly your friend or supporter. Do not become overly excited at the slightest thing God is doing in your life to the extent of losing control of your tongue. Many Christians often fall into this trap 
and their blessings or miracles are prematurely cut short. Discussing your expectations from God and how immensely blessed you feel should not be done with everyone, be it Christian friends or colleagues. When it comes to your blessings, there are people you must never share them with, including unbelievers. The Bible emphatically warns that you have no business being close to unbelievers. In 2 Corinthians 6.14, the Bible says, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? NIV. Remember the nature of the flesh is inherently corrupt and filled with wickedness. Anyone who is not a child of God is a child of the devil. And even if they are not aware of it themselves, that fact does not change. So, telling such a person about your blessings or your next step of action is as bad as opening your life to the devil himself. They might smile and act happy when you share it with them, but deep down, the prince of this world controlling them wishes otherwise. Haven't you heard of people being boycotted by close, unbelieving allies when they share their success stories with them? We are in such an evil world, and the people in the world are getting worse every day. When you receive your blessings, be quiet about it. The evil people of this world don't want things to go well with you. Aside from unbelievers, you must be careful of people who talk down on you and the blessings of God in your life. Sometimes what you need to move from bad to good is just a little encouragement. And in the same vein, what will cause a backward movement is just a tiny discouragement. When you have people bent on discouraging you at every opportunity, you must learn to shut up your mouth around them when something good is happening in your life. Regardless of who they are to you, you must distance yourself from them because they have only one agenda, making sure the blessings of God in your life don't materialize. Remember the story of David when he visited his brothers at the war front? He was on the verge of his biggest miracle, which was to kill Goliath. But when he spoke about it to his brother, the brother despised and discouraged him for it. Thank God David didn't give up. He quickly went to another person who took him to the king. You know the rest of the story. He didn't only kill Goliath, he also became a palace citizen and later the king of Israel. After this video, make sure you avoid talking about your blessing to the people who are foremost at talking down to you, no matter who they are to you. You must also be aware of those who talk too much. When a secret is shared with someone who talks too much, you can only imagine how far it will spread. You don't want the whole world to know what's happening in your life, so you must keep quiet. These individuals might not have ill intentions towards you, but their inability to remain quiet could harm you if you reveal your blessings to them. They will unwittingly share your success stories which may eventually reach your adversaries. These adversaries will then make every effort to turn your happiness into sorrow. Have you heard about the ruler of the kingdom of the air? Ephesians 2.2 mentions the ruler of the kingdom of the air, NIV. And you might be asking, what does this mean? The devil is the ruler of the kingdom of the air, and he doesn't just possess people, but also possesses things and elements. The devil and his demons can influence the air, and derive information from it when you speak. You must be careful about what and when you speak. There are demons in the air, and when you expose your blessings carelessly, the devil might lay hold of them and turn them around for evil. That might be your current situation, leaving you to wonder why things went wrong when you told nobody. There are princes everywhere, which is why you must sanctify your environment with the blood of Jesus from time to time. Even as you sanctify your environment, learn to keep your excitement to yourself. Some people are known for screaming at every piece of good news, which is not bad, and rejoicing quietly isn't a bad idea. You don't want the princes of the air to gain access to your life through your screams and excitement at the blessings of God. Silence is proof of wisdom. It is also a weapon of safety. Samson would never have been captured or killed if his mouth had been shut. His power was a blessing from God. Your blessing might be a skill or something specific to only you. It would be utter foolishness to expose it to the world. If God wanted everyone to access it, he'd have distributed it to everyone on earth. He knew you needed it specifically, 
so he gave it to you. Blessings are secret things, just like gold and other minerals, and should be treated as such. When crude oil is extracted from underground, it is not treated as just any other thing. It is taken to another closed place to be refined. It doesn't need to proclaim itself after it is refined. People rush to it. Instead of shouting about your blessings, let God make the announcement. You'll need to take deliberate actions today about how you live your life. You have no one to please except God. After deciding to keep quiet about the blessings of God, you might witness a drawback from your friends, who might think you don't find them important enough to tell them all that is happening in your life. But that's fine. Does it really matter? If it matters, God would have announced to them first before blessing you. Instead of telling everyone about the blessings of God in your life, why not jot them down in journals? The popular hymn says, count your blessings, not shout your blessings. And one of the ways to count your blessings is by writing them down from time to time. So, next time, instead of telling everyone about the blessings of God in your life, remember that Judas Iscariot was Jesus' treasurer, and yet he betrayed him with a kiss. To avoid betrayal, pain, and disappointment, master the art of keeping God's blessings to yourself, because they were initially for you and you alone. If you incorporate this into your day-to-day -day life, you'll be surprised at the level of heartaches you avoid. Until we meet again, remember that your blessings are to be counted, not shouted. Do you desire God's blessings, but none seem anywhere near you? You have prayed, you have fasted, yet there's nothing to show for it. You are about to give up finally on God. But wait, have you checked yourself to see if you are the one blocking God's blessing in your life? Yeah, you can stop His blessings. Ensure you watch this video until the end as I unveil seven signs that are blocking God's blessings in your life. You will discover that you've been holding God's hands all along. Learn these seven signs and do all you can to separate yourself from them. Every believer desires God's blessings. Why? Proverbs 10.23 says, The blessing of the Lord brings wealth without pain toil for it. This means you can receive God's blessings without any stress. Interestingly, God wants to bless everyone who trusts in His name, and that includes you. However, what if you are the obstacle to God's blessings in your life? What if your actions and your lifestyle are opposing God's blessings? That is why you need to learn the signs that show you are blocking God's blessings in your life. The very first one is living a destructive lifestyle. Sound health is the first expression of God's blessings upon your life. God wants you to live healthily because you need it in your career to serve Him and be available for your family and loved ones. 3 John 1, 2 says, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. This is God's will for you. However, you may be living a destructive lifestyle that contradicts God's will for your health. Since God wants you to live in good health, He cannot bless you with these lifestyles. For instance, smoking can hurt your internal body system. No matter how long you pray to God for the blessing of good health, smoking will keep blocking your prayers. Drinking, substance abuse, and watching pornography affect your body and mind. These in turn decrease your productivity. God won't be able to work in your life. Make up your mind to do away with these destructive lifestyles. Even if it's an addiction, pray, fast, and study God's Word about it. And if need be, seek the help of a counselor. Always remember that destructive lifestyles are a big blocker to your blessings. Another sign that you are blocking God's blessings in your life is living in fear. Fear is a negative human emotion that can hold you back from actualizing what God deposited in you. According to Bible scholars, the phrase, fear not, appeared 365 times in the Bible. This means God wants you to reject fear every day of the year. It's a deep instruction from the Almighty God. God wants to bless you and then you want the blessings. Why? You are His image and ambassador on earth. However, God won't bless you on your bed, neither will He bless your thoughts. He will bless the works of your hands. But are you taking the action? Have you allowed the fear of the unknown to tie you to your bed? Taking action is a prerequisite to receiving God's blessings. 
What happened to the business plans you conceived in your God-given mind? I encourage you to start taking action towards your reality. Start that career, acquire that skill, or get that college degree. Late Dr. Miles Monroe said that the world comprises three sets of people, the action takers, the spectators, and those who don't even know what's happening. Make up your mind and be an action taker and launch yourself into the realms of God's blessings. Don't entertain fear. God has given you a courageous heart. The third sign that you may be blocking God's blessings in your life is poor work ethic. These are behaviors that limit your productivity. Some are laziness, lack of commitment, and poor time management. Remember, God detests laziness. Build the right character and ethics for your career, business, or education. An excellent man will stand out among his equals. An excellent is not a result of wishful thinking or mere desires. Excellence in any profession results from long-term commitment and a high level of practice. How punctual are you to your office or business? What are the initiatives you're taking to boost your productivity? Do you utilize your working hours or scroll social media? One of the ways you can become excellent in your profession and even attain mastery is by learning something about your profession for at least an hour every day. This way you stay updated and optimize your imagination. Also have a mentor. Who is your role model? Learn from the best and you will become the best. Learning has never been easier than we have in this era. This is how you developed a good work ethic. And what is the ripple effect? God will release his blessings upon your life. Being greedy is another sign that you are stopping God's blessings from manifesting in your life. Being greedy is an endless desire for something. As a believer, God wants you to build selflessness before committing numerous resources into your custody. But when you are greedy, you will always want more than you need. This will make you selfish. It can lead to being ungrateful and stealing from your boss. And all these will stop God from blessing you. According to Proverbs 10:25. Ill-gotten treasures have no lasting value, but righteousness delivers from death. Therefore, what you receive outside God's principles won't last. It would only hinder God's blessings in your life. You will find it hard to give to others in God's household. God doesn't bless you just for yourself, but for his purposes and to be a blessing to others. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will receive the same. And when you are no longer greedy, you will find it easy to pay your tithe. Refusing to pay your tithe is synonymous with cheating God. He gave you the power in life to make money. Why then should you rob him? When you pay faithfully, God will deal with the devourers of your sake. And that means nothing will stop the overflow of God's blessings in your life. Commit to conquering greed so God can entrust more resources to your care. The fifth sign that you are blocking God's blessings in your life is living a prayerless life. When you pray, you can table your needs and desires before God. You communicate with him and he assures you of his blessings. But when you don't pray, you block your ears from hearing God. Also, you stop his hands from moving in your life. Jabez had been living in poverty for years. Perhaps he had even married and had children in the same condition. Nothing extraordinary happened in his life until he cried to God. In 1 Chronicles 4.10, Jabez prayed a pathetic prayer. He asked God to bless and enlarge his territory. He asked for freedom from pain. This is when God found it worthy to intervene in Jabez's life. He didn't hesitate to bless him. The Bible says that Jabez became the most honorable among his brethren. If you will also pray, God won't withhold what is good from you. Pray for enlargement in your business. Pray for great ideas that will lead to profitable ventures. Ask for his directions on how to go about your career, education, pursuit, and your aspirations. Remember, you are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. The devil doesn't take pleasure in your success, especially if you're a committed believer. He knows that once God blesses you, you will use it to expand God's kingdom. This is what he doesn't want, so he will fight you with all his powers. You can't fight him with the degree you got from business school or the qualifications you earned after advanced studies in your career. You fight him by praying in the name of Jesus. He had conquered the devil and made a public spectacle of him. This is the assurance that you have as a Christian. Pray and commit all that concerns you to him. You can't be lukewarm in prayer and expect God to bless you.
The sixth sign that you are blocking your blessings is having a jealous mindset. A jealous mindset closes your eyes to the potential residing in you. It makes you wander into the affairs of others when you should be focusing on your growth. Jealousy leads to selfish ambitions, and where this exists, there is no purpose. You keep competing and comparing yourself with others instead of cooperating with your colleagues and associates. If you want God to shower his blessings upon you, engage in teamwork and be grateful for their breakthrough as you expect yours. Remember, we are products of our thoughts. Being jealous of others fills your mind with negativity, and that reduces productivity. Remember that a heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. Glorify God for the blessings of others, and yours will come. He is not a partial God. God could have blessed Rachel with many children like he blessed her sister, Leah. However, Rachel envied her sister. She didn't love her for a day. This made God seize her womb from conceiving. She remained in this position until God had mercy on her. You might be Rachel today. God wants to bless you. However, the obstacle to this might be your envy towards your neighbor. Let it go right now. God will bless you mightily. The very last sign that you are blocking God's blessings is being proud. Pride has led to the downfall of men, then failure will ever. Pride leads to unrealistic expectations. To access God's blessings, you need to grow out of your current mindset in all areas of your life. But then if you are proud, you won't think of growing. Pride gives a false sense of arrival. It makes you think that you already have what God wants to give you. When God gives you an idea that can open great opportunities for you, you tend to classify it as small and insignificant, whereas you haven't even tried to see its viability. You have forgotten that God knows more than you do. Some businesses that have blessed so many lives today started small. Some popular CEOs had nothing to show for their work when they started their businesses. Are you willing to detest pride and start small? Are you willing to learn your way up the ladder for any business or profession? God personally opposes the proud, but diligently lifts the humble. According to Proverbs 11:2, when pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. Pride will stop you from seeing new ideas that can improve your business and career. So desist from this blessing destroyer, humble yourself under God's hand, and let him lift you to your desired place. The Lord delights in your well-being. Take solitude in his promise to bless you and try to live a lifestyle that makes this possible. Eradicate fear and pray to activate his blessings in your life. Remain humble, even when God has blessed you. This will attract more success to you. Decide to achieve mastery in your field. Trust me, the wave of God's blessings will hit you mightily. God's love for humanity is indisputable. Without a doubt, God loves you and cares for you. His blessings are available to you, and He desires to bless you with everything you need in life. The only thing that may be standing in your way of receiving His blessings is unbelief. James chapter 1, verses 6 through 7 says, But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Although everyone wants to receive God's blessings, there is a condition for receiving them. That condition is faith in God. Trusting God and believing that He can do the impossible is the key to receiving His blessings. Abraham believed in God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. Similarly, believing in God gives you an edge when it comes to receiving from Him. Unbelief is the devil's tool for hindering people from receiving God's blessings. No doubt, God wants to heal you, free you from bondage, redeem your souls, and transform your minds. However, you need to trust Him with your troubles and take everything to Him before you see His hand in everything. God's promises are scattered all over scriptures. It's like a locked room full of treasures. The only key to open that room is faith in God. Every other thing you do that does not relate to faith will fail to grant you access to that room. You need faith to enjoy unlimited blessings from God. When you do not believe in God, you will find it difficult to take your burdens to Him. You'll find yourself trying to do things on your own without allowing God to take the lead. When He doesn't take the lead, there is no way you'll receive the blessing. You see, most of the time, 
People try to figure things out before they trust God. They want Him to prove Himself before they believe in Him. They threaten and do all sorts, but in the end, they turn to ungodly alternatives. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. It is impossible to receive anything from God if you do not have faith. That is why the Bible admonishes you to have faith in God. Faith captures everything you need to be in the position where you can receive from God. In Exodus and Numbers, the Israelites repeatedly doubted God's ability to provide for them and lead them to the promised land. Many times, they allowed their unbelief to push them into murmuring and complaining, and that made them incur the wrath of God. Millions of them left Egypt, but only two out of those who initially left Egypt made it into Canaan. That is what unbelief can do. It shortchanges you and hinders you from receiving the best from God. It keeps you from receiving God's promises fulfilled in your life. When you find yourself doubting the possibilities of God's words, it's not the time to sit down. Rather, it's the time to stand and reject every spirit of unbelief. Unbelief is of the devil. It's the devil's device to stop believers from enjoying God's blessings. Faith is a key factor in receiving anything from God. While Jesus ministered on earth, you'd often hear him say, be it unto you according to your faith. Then the people would receive their miracles. That's because faith plays a great role in everything a person wants to receive from God. And as the book of James puts it, if you pray without faith, you won't receive what you are asking for. Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth were faithful ministers of God. Even though they had no child, they continued to serve God faithfully. Then, an angel visited Zechariah and told him that his wife was going to have a child. He could not believe it and even argued with the angel. He became dumb because of his unbelief, and it was only by the mercies of God that he eventually had the child. No doubt God's words, no matter how unbelievable the promise is. Sometimes due to what you have been through, you might have become used to the problem that you no longer see it as a subject of prayer. That should still not make you doubt the possibility of God coming through for you. Jesus resurrected and appeared to the disciples for the first time, but Thomas was absent. When he returned, the other disciples told him, but he refused to believe it. After a week, Jesus returned, and at that time, Thomas was around. He finally believed it was Jesus when he saw the prints of the nails on his hands and the scar on his side. Jesus told him something profound that every believer needs to keep on their minds as they work through life. Jesus said, Blessed are those who have not seen, but yet believed. That is faith, believing before seeing, and that is what holds the hand of miracles and every blessing you desire. Unbelief causes you to doubt, become afraid, lose hope, and disobey God's command. That is how deadly unbelief can be. It takes you from the place of enjoying God's blessings to become an outright enemy of the cross. Unbelief is deadly, and you need to fight it out of your life. How do you fight it? You get rid of unbelief through faith. Faith sends out every form of fear and unbelief. Faith is a complete dependence on God without any form of doubt. It's true that you may have lost your faith, or your faith might have become so weak due to that you can no longer hold on. What should you do when your faith is dying? How do you rekindle the fire of faith in your life? The Word of God is the sure way for you to build your faith. When you know the Word of God, your faith will not die. When you sense doubt, panic, and anxiety taking over, it's time to go back and stay with the Word of God until your faith is rekindled. Sometimes you can pause and check your life. When you are praying about a thing and your prayer is not producing the result you want, check the state of your heart. Unbelief is the major blessing blocker. That is why you have to wage war against unbelief in your life. You should not allow it at all, so that it would not find footing in your life. Building a strong faith is non-negotiable if you want to wage war against unbelief. The work of the devil is to steal, kill, and destroy. He is a liar and the father of all lies. The truth is foreign to his nature, and you can never catch the devil saying the truth. Even when he presents what looks like the truth, it is always laden with lies. 
His goal always is to discredit God so that you can begin to doubt God's words. He knows that once he succeeds, you cannot doubt and trust at the same time. You cannot receive anything when you are full of doubt. Look at the life of Adam and Eve. When the devil came to Eve to tempt her, he presented what God has said in a paraphrased format, all in the bid to confuse her. Did God really say that when you eat of the fruit of the garden, you'll die? That was enough to get Eve into a conversation with him. You should never give the devil a chance to question God's words in your heart, because that is how it starts. Once you give attention to that seed of doubt and then you start ruminating over it, you are beginning to lose already. The next thing the devil did after Eve told him what God actually said was to dispute God's word. You shall not surely die, he told Eve. He didn't stop there. He went further to tempt Eve into lusting after what she shouldn't have. The devil is the old serpent and hasn't changed his strategy. He still does this today. After he has made you the magnitude of the problems in your life and discredited every promise God has made for you, he will deceive you into receiving an alternative from him that will keep you locked out of God's will. Beloved, don't even give the devil a chance to tell you anything. Whenever a thought drops in your heart, test if it is consistent with God's word. Anything from the devil always negates God's word. That is the litmus test that will make you know the source of that thought. Once you know that is contrary, rebuke it at once. Don't even allow it to settle because the devil is really subtle. Once you give him a foothold, he makes himself become a stronghold, and that will serve as a limiting factor in your life for a long time. The devil might bring residue from your past to make you doubt God's promises. That's all falsehood. While you are waiting on God, let's say for a spouse, and you are praying to get all the perfect person, then the devil reminds you of the mess of your past life, haunting you that you cannot get a perfect person, and you should just settle for whatever comes for you. Then you may start believing that and end up settling for someone you know is not the best. Beloved, your past has no say over your future. Once you have received forgiveness from God, he forgets your past, and you can start afresh with him. So, don't allow that to make you settle for what is not the best. The devil has been using this trick for a long time and has not stopped. Therefore, you need to be vigilant and watch out for the wiles of the devil. Do not get carried away by whatever it is that you want or whatever is going on, and don't allow unbelief to slip into your heart. It is your duty to build up your faith and make sure that it continues to grow daily. Your faith will not grow in a vacuum. It will grow based on the amount of knowledge you have. That is why spending time studying the Word of God is non-negotiable. You need to know what God has said for you to believe it no matter what happens. The Word of God cannot fail. It has not failed, and it will never fail. That is why you need to know and believe the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Always remember that when you have doubt in your heart, you cannot receive anything from God. When your faith is full and intact, you can have all that you need and even more. Each day comes with gifts from God, and today is yet another beautiful day to experience such blessings. Massive blessings that cannot be quantified. Blessings that are meant to fill up your barns to an overflow. But don't be surprised, you might miss these blessings. This is not to scare you, but the truth. Could it be that the reason you've been experiencing God's blessings ever since is because you are holding on to the wrong things? What could be those things standing as obstacles on your path to receiving God's blessings? I want you to open up your heart today to hear from God as He is ready to reveal everything, how to detach yourself from them and the keys to unlock those pending blessings. Jesus said something powerful in the scriptures. He specifically stated the impossibility of giving attention to God and holding on to something else. He said, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. This powerful verse says it all. Your devotion to God should be a priority and not alongside the things of this world. The verse emphasizes the need to detach yourself from worldly possessions, specifically the love of money. 
money in itself isn't evil, but the love of money is the root of all evil, and God's blessings are not connected with any sinful. God desires that you focus on serving and prioritizing Him. When you are attached to the wrong things, such as material things, wealth, or worldly desires, it can hinder you from experiencing the blessings God intends to lavish on you. Idolatry irritates God. Leaving your Creator and exalting material things can trigger God's anger. This is the reason why He is called the Jealous God. He is jealous over you. Engaging in self-destructive behaviors, such as excessive drinking, drug abuse, or unhealthy premarital relationships, can hinder blessings physically, mentally, or emotionally. God detests all these actions. It's a wrong attachment to your life and destiny. These habits do not only stop your blessings, but can create obstacles to your personal growth and success. Another dangerous hindrance to God's blessings is a negative mindset. Your mind can be likened to a control pad that controls your life and time. You are the definition of what you think. Pessimism, self-doubt, or constant focus on past failures can hinder blessings. It can limit your ability to recognize opportunities and take positive action. It has the propensity of keeping you on a spot for a long time without you even knowing. Your mindset may have been wrongly influenced by friends or the wrong counselors you've met or the books you've read. You need to do away with them fast if you want to claim your blessings. Holding grudges and refusing to forgive can also hinder your blessings. It can keep you stuck in negative emotions and prevent healing and growth. Practicing forgiveness can free you from emotional burdens and open the door to positive experiences. Your heart and mind experience peace and rest when you ask for forgiveness or pardon those who offended you. One of God's desires for you is for your heart to be without trouble or pain. Don't miss this all because of unforgiveness. The book of Genesis showed us Jacob's struggle when he kept refusing to make things right with his brother. Though he was blessed with wives, children, and cattle, there was still something missing in his life. The numerous cattle, wives, and kids couldn't feel the void. God's peace was missing in his life, and that's the greatest blessing. He summoned courage at last to receive forgiveness and pardon. Esau's ability to forgive Jacob despite the pain he had caused him demonstrates the transformative power of letting go of resentment and choosing reconciliation. Could unforgiveness be hindering you from receiving God's blessings? Forgiveness brings healing and freedom, not only for the one who receives it, but also for the one who extends it. Holding on to grudges brings unsettlement no matter how wealthy you are. If you have wronged someone, it's time to make things right and restitute. Don't bribe your way like Jacob, who came with offerings and gifts to Esau as a means of reconciliation. Do the right thing and you will be extending peace to not just yourself, but also the second party. You will also have the confidence to withstand opposition whenever it arises. God's blessing is an expression of His favor and kindness towards you. He supplies you daily with divine protection, guidance, and provision. Lack of gratitude and appreciation for the blessings already received can also hinder further blessings. When you are addicted to an act of ingratitude, you stand between yourself and His blessings. When you're consumed with ingratitude towards men and even God, you are closing doors to more positive things which ought to come your way. In Psalm 68, 19, David says, Blessed be the Lord, who daily loads us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. Take a look at the life of David in the scriptures. He acknowledged the daily blessings of God and daily gave thanks. No wonder he never lost a battle. Ingratitude demagnifies the worth of God's goodness in your life. God wants you to recognize and acknowledge the excellency of His power. Appreciating Him compels Him to do more. The psalmist says God's goodness is loaded with endless benefits. His reward is daily and consistent. Why not do away with the nagging, complaining, and discouragement? Give thanks for the little you have and for what He has done in the past and you will begin to experience abundance. Beloved, 
Gratitude, which can be expressed through praises, hymns, or worship songs, is powerful. It can open prison doors and set free. Likewise, failure to express it can close doors and lock your blessings. You can't afford to live a life devoid of God's blessings. If you do, you will keep struggling every day. God's blessings are what you need to succeed in life. God's blessing isn't just limited to monetary compensation. It comprises of favor, good health, peace of mind, promotion, protection, grace, and many more. Only God gives good health that the world can't offer. God's blessing comes with peace, joy, and a sense of fulfillment. When God blesses you, He gives you hope for a better and brighter future. Have you been struggling with so many hurts from the past? Could they be the reason why you're not being blessed? You cannot be holding on to the past and be expecting God to move you to the next level. What are the challenges you've faced in the past? Are they filled with pain, regret, and bitterness? That shouldn't be a reason to languish in sin. You need to let go. You need to heal and forgive. You need to let go of the hatred so that you will receive your blessings. Your horrible past doesn't stop God from blessing you, but your disposition can stop those blessings from reaching you. God does not want to see you in that state of self-pity and guilt. Enough! Never get glued to your wrong past. You can't carry the stain of the past on your journey to that blessed future God has in store for you. You can't fully enjoy the blessings of today if all you do is languish in the pain of the past. God wants to bless you indeed, but to get this gift, your hands must be well positioned. God needs it empty and free. You must break free from every entanglement and shackle. The grace of God is available for your redemption and salvation. As you lose yourself from the tide, focus on God and live happily. Also, to enjoy God's blessings, you need to root out sin completely. The great wise King Solomon declares the consequences of entanglements with negativities. In Song of Solomon 2 verse 15, he said, Take away the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. Solomon was a king who has experienced the blessing of God. He was blessed in wisdom and finance and lived a successful kingship. He knew the things that can hinder God's riches. He called them little fox. A little lying here and there, little dishonesty, and a lack of integrity can create obstacles and hindrances to your blessings. As insignificant as you think a spoon of poison is, it can kill a giant elephant faster than any other thing. Don't nurse that little sin. They are deadly for your physical, spiritual, and emotional well-being. Take them far from you. They can terminate the plan of God for your life. God is instructing you to take them away as fast as possible. You may think it is done in secret and no one can see it. I want you to know that you can't hide it from God. He is omnipresent, who sees and hears everything, including the thought of your heart. God rewards those who diligently seek Him. When you are resistant to change or holding on to a sinful habit, you hinder God's blessings for your life. Don't give a chance for the enemy to lure you not to repent. Repentance is the first key to experiencing open doors. When you decide to let go of the wrongdoings, you are embracing change. You are opening yourself up to new possibilities, which can lead to greater heights. Before we draw the curtain, I want you to take note that not only unforgiveness, ingratitude, sin, and negative experiences can hinder God's blessing. Laziness and lethargy can be a terrible blockage to your divine blessing. Before God opens the windows of heaven, hope you have a room to contain it. While expecting a miracle, hope your hands are not idle. God dislikes any form of laziness. God withdraws his blessings from an idle man. Even the devil never uses a lazy man for his business. You need to get busy with your life and what God has committed to your hands. Recall what the Bible says in Proverbs 22:29, which means only a man who is diligent in his business will stand before kings. And you know standing before kings is a massive blessing. Before you begin to blame the devil for the delays of your miracle, 
Look into yourself and ask if truly your hands are on the spindle. Blessings often come through effort, hard work, and taking action. If you're not actively working towards your goals or putting in the required effort, you may miss out on potential blessings. Ultimately, God's blessing is about being in alignment with His will and fellowshipping in His presence all the days of your life. You must realize that true fulfillment and blessings come from being in communion and fellowship with God. When you begin to draw closer to God, you will have no problem doing away with the wrong things. And as you do so, His blessings begin to flood in.